Okay, I will be very quiet. Right, so we have started recording and we are going to be talking about the Westnitz M. Welsh holography today. That's the end of my intro. No, it's just a live session. That's Rox's dog barking in the background. Um, no, it's the neighbors. Oh, it's the neighbor's dog. Okay. Excellent. Um, so I know that some people have started knitting, some people are a little have some questions other people want to talk about colors and stuff um carol in the u.s was going to set her alarm clock for 5 a.m so that she could get up and join us and talk okay. color. I, I, she's not here yet but uh, anything's possible um so uh, shall we have a little look at everyone's progress or do we not want to do that and then we can just go around and see who's when and and who wants some help or advice or suggestions. Definitely. We can inspire anyone who watches the video. Spoiler alert, we're going to be showing our swatches or progress, <laughs> <Definitely. working> progress. <laughs> I'm happy to show mine. Okay, fabulous. Let's start with you, Lauren. Let's see, what have you got? Okay, I'm going to pin you. Hold on. Ooh. I'm going to pin you. Wow. Oh. Lauren's boasting that she's finished the entire oh, thing. Oh, she's finished Yay. the whole thing. Well yes. So, and Lauren. I really, I did not knit all the time. I took my time to do it. I just, yeah. Brag, um, brag, brag. Not brag, brag, <laughs> brag. Thanks, Ananda. No, I'm honestly saying that it is doable. Yeah. That you don't have to stress, you can get it done. So Lauren, and then, can we have a slightly closer look at your colours? Because I think colour is one of the things that a lot of people are concerned about. And so you're knitting in quite a, a sort of winter dark. palette, palette, yeah. dark palette, palette. So um, I, I don't know if they're all our colours, but in our, it looks like rainforest and plum. They, and they're airport. not exactly. your colours. That, no, that's yeah. fine, but, but in the terms closest, of color palette, that's yeah. where they so are. So I would say if you want to do similar colors to this, definitely um, Rainforest, Silver Fox. Um, uh, and your color, so if we start from the beginning, color A is... is that I'm just your, trying to think of what your variegated yeah. is with the mustards in that. Um, yeah. So with the mustards, it could be true colors or it could be... True colors. Um, true colors Canadian. would be similar. Then um, the gray would be silver fox, the yeah. green rainforest, then um, aubergine. Yeah, or plum. And then, um, or plum. And then I've got, it's a strange variegated. It's like okay. got the grays in that, but there you could bring in um, maybe... Um, I'm just trying to think of your blues. Air Force would yeah. be close Similar. color there. So it's it's just interesting to see how you've put the colors together. So your color A is in the little section at the bottom there, and that's yes. variegated. Yes. And then color B is the gray that's forming the the visible lines yeah. on the wedges. Yeah. So the fox. And then color C is the first or second wedge the, um, the first C. wedge the background to the first wedge yeah yeah which was the green okay and that then is showing up again in the first section after the wedges and it's yeah. um it's making that um slip slip stitch the v the yeah, slip stitch v. slip stitch v's over there yeah and then D and E are the plum color and the um, the Air Force type color that are in those stripes yeah. behind the Vs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so I was back in this to... section, color A, obviously you're seeing in the beginning and you did say pick your favorite color or your yes. color up or um, something there. And then color B is, is making a big showing in this section but obviously we don't know what's yeah. going to happen afterwards no so he said well when i watched his video i actually had mine slightly differently and then he said the other colors are going to make much more of a show later on yeah. so that's why i went with the gray for b yeah nice nice yeah. that looks awesome Thank you. and you didn't have any trouble with the knitting i'm sure because you are i did experienced knitter <laughs> more the pattern reading okay any any tips uh, for anybody? Uh, read it line by line, and yeah. so row or row by row, and 
once I started doing that, then I didn't make any more mistakes. Yeah. Um, don't think that you know what's going to happen and just read ahead. Yeah. Yeah. It's just follow it piece by piece. I yeah. mean, if patterns are a bit complex, you know, that's the intention behind this is to make it interesting. So. Yeah. And I love the fact that like everybody leaves an eye cord as an aging and he's yeah. used it in the shawl itself as a feature, yeah. which I think is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Um, and it's much nicer to pick up stitches off an eye cord than um, mm. a cast off edge. Yeah. It's much easier. It gives you a much smoother finish. Yeah. Yes. Are there any tips for that pickup? Um, he says go Watch through video. The, <laughs> yeah, on his video. He says go through the V um, when you do the pickup. Oh. Yeah. Um, Sue, so I've, I've set up my phone here as a second camera so we can look at some of the technical parts um, uh, and, and go through any questions anyone's got. Excellent. Yeah, so we can look at that. Awesome. Thanks, Lauren. Okay, hey, who's Jen. next? Melinda. Who's got a show and tell? Okay, I'll, I'll go. Okay. Um, I've got reasonably far. So hold on one sec for me. I'm just going to spotlight you for everybody. Wow, that's looking amazing. Oh, <laughs> great. So your color pop is the, is the yellow. yellow. So I went with the highest contrast that I could. Okay. And then I went for the dark option for color B, which is yep. a dark green. Yeah, um, nice. So there's the biggest contrast color <laughs> A and color yes. B. Nice. And then a green, a yellow, an orange, red, and then back. So, yeah, I'm going to on the tail end. Uh, I struggled with the first the startup. I thought, gosh, I can't get the startup right. I'm going to have some difficulties. The startup was quite <laughs> tricky. It was quite complicated. It was like six times over. Then I realized that, oh, I was doing the yarn over incorrectly. So that's why it wasn't matching his one at all. Um, and then once I got past the first I cord and the first red and some oopsies, um, I just found my, found my flow. And I just so loved it. Right. Um, tricky though, working with cotton, because three yeah. of the yarns are cotton and two are bamboo. Yeah. And one of the bamboo is a bamboo viscose blend, and it's basically like a million little fibers okay. just randomly together as a yarn. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that makes it trying to make difficult. sure the needle doesn't split all the time. Yeah. And the cotton splits quite easily. So I had to con concentrate quite a bit. But I like the the lightness and the the, the drape of the cotton. It's incredibly soft and um, fluffy. So not fluffy as in wool fluffy, but just light. Beautiful. So yeah, I'm, I'm delighted. But yeah, it was a bit of a rough start. <laughs> awesome. No, you're doing so well. It looks amazing. <laughs> Thanks. It's been great. Really good. Fantastic. Okay. Thanks, Belinda. Who's going to be next to show us their show us their stuff? Margaret. <laughs> Ananda, Ooh, I love how you're just yeah. pulling out who you uh, <laughs> Wow, well, I want to see. I'm let's get her. Yeah. I'm curious. Okay, Margaret, okay. Show us what you've got. Okay, well, I haven't gone all that far. Um, I think I bundled up that first bit, but since it's in variegated, doesn't matter. You won't be able to notice. Um, so um, Margaret, Hang on. Uh, just let me get rid of the cat. Yeah, <laughs> she wants to see too. So if yeah. you can hold yours, uh, hold it still in front of the camera. Um, no, you're wobbling it around, waving it around. Well, that's because there's an animal here. Okay. Okay. Um, so it doesn't look like you've got much contrast in that first way. Well, my colors are all quite dark, so. I've, I've got, I did purple and pink. Yeah. And then it said, go back to the first color. Yeah. Which is there. And now I'm doing orange. Okay. Well, if you're happy with how it's panning out, that's all that matters really. Well, um, yeah. I, my colors I felt were all quite similar. So, um, well, they were all quite dark. So um, well, then I don't you think I like, I don't think I like this first bit. But then um, it's important to like it. So you haven't gone very far, I'd rather pull it undone now. But before you pull it undone, come down to my house and let's talk about it. Okay, all right, okay. Yeah. Okay, but I, I, I must say, um, I thought he, uh, when he did the video, 
he he talks so nicely and he explains everything and he goes back and forward and he yeah i thought the video was very very helpful um, yeah he does make great videos yeah he does and he's bright and chirpy and yeah yeah and so is the dog yeah yeah okay <laughs> Yeah, that's me. Okay, fantastic. So, Ananda, who's next? Um, I think it could be Roxy, but she's just left the she room. just stood up. Yes, so it might have to be you. Me. <laughs> okay. okay. I have... Hold on one sec. I'm going to spotlight you. Okay. There we go. Okay. I haven't gotten very far. I've just done my first little wedge. That looks nice. Nice yeah. contrast. And, and, and I have to tell it. you that I had to take a nap afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> and I've just woken What's... up from the nap. <laughs> Not really. I've got hours full of guests. But yeah, um, I phoned Lauren yesterday. So that helped. And we did a video magafter. And she um, helped and explained to me. So yeah, I think when I now start the second one, the second wedge, it will be easier. So I haven't read any further to the pattern. I've just gotten to where I am. And now today I have to start again. So, Perfect. yeah. That looks great. And what yeah. other colors are you putting in there? Uh, we're doing that. Yeah. We're doing that. Yeah. Um, and this is my first color. Nice. Um, and that color. And that is my variegated. Okay, beautiful. Ooh, and so you you're using the, the kind of Air Force um, color as your color B. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, and then that I turquoise think color is in there. Sorry, mine has been um, a, a stash dive. Okay, lovely. So, yeah, light blue. Yeah, uh, I do like blues. Yeah, and this is lovely because yeah. it's got like a speckle of um, yeah. bright lemon yeah. yellow in there which turns to orange and then light blue and stuff. Nice. Yeah. And it's nice to see a stash dive. Turquoise. Yeah. I'm very grateful. Oh, that's, that's looking because good. Now I can go and buy some more. Whoa. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thanks, Ananda. Yeah. Welcome. Roxy. Yeah. Hello. Sorry. Uh, there's obviously something happening next door, with, uh, which is very interesting for the dogs to bark really loud. So I have confined her inside. Okay. So it's a bit more quiet. Okay. okay. Show us your stuff. Hello. Okay, hold yeah. it still, hold it still, hold it still. Oh, no, hang on. Hurry oh. on the camera. Okay. So that looks that amazing. Is right? back. That is the back. So you can yeah. see the co different colors coming through yeah. here. Yes. Yeah. And then front. Um, yeah. So th the beginning was quite easy. And then suddenly... I, I stopped and then I, I went on with this one and then it became something like way bigger. So I had to frog it, frog it. Um, but because we had all our classes with Jane, I was very confident to do so. I dropped two stitches. Can we see them? No. How <laughs> do you fix my stitches when I drop them? It's like, so everything from last year has built up to me doing this really neatly. So thank you, Jane. She's not here, but when she is, I will thank her again. And yeah, so I've got one, one boo boo. Where is it? Don't show us. Don't show us. It's on the I cord. It's a bit, it's a bit fluffy here, but I think I, I just left it because we're going to knit at the back. So then you won't see it. So yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I also indeed, like, like Margaret said, his videos are so easy to follow. And and the, the whole thing is like, oh, don't stress, just say yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> it's just when, when the one wedge was like really much bigger than the other ones, I was like, I was holding it like this, and then it went like, mm. I like, nah, I, that's that's no, I'm not gonna, I'm going to stress about that. So I, I am going to just frog that. So yeah, but otherwise, I'm I'm happy where I am. And then now the next decision is the coloring. Well, like obviously you should follow him, but um. But I'm I'm just wondering what to do with the, the the V's, you know, that are on because officially it has to be black because that's my color B. But um, I think it becomes quite dark, so I'm going yeah. to mix it up a bit. Yeah. Light so, color. And and yeah, Rob, I, like I think that's a really nice way to to work it is especially when you're doing a mystery like this, 
you don't know how the colors are going to look and so you've got to got to yeah. start and then feel free to make a few changes it might affect yeah. your yarn quantities a little but yeah. the the design yeah. are super flexible in terms of how many colors you put in and you can always um add something different yeah i'm 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 thinking of adding this blue nice. as the v Nice. Which is a bit of a bigger one, thicker one, but yeah. because it's the it's just it's a okay. piece, it might be a nice contrast. And yeah. I have it. So, and then I've got solids, uh, these solids, yeah, as the, the rows. And then I'll give my my variegated yarn this one. I'll give that a very big spotlight later on because later I'm sure on. somewhere in the shawl it's gonna yeah. we're gonna use this quite hectically. Yeah. So I'll keep it more solid colors now. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So that was what I was plotting this morning. Lovely. And was, yeah. So looking forward to that. Good. So it's all yeah. going well so far. But that's me so far. <laughs> Fantastic. Well done. Okay, um, Bridget. Okay, I'm up next. Okay. Um. Hold on one second. Uh. Let me just spotlight myself. Um. Okay. I'm going to be fancy and I'm going to do this um, on the uh, table. Ha. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. So, um, so I, I haven't got as far as, as some of you, but I'm just going to stretch this out a little bit so that you can see the color combinations. So I've used the olive as my color A, and then I picked Karma Chameleon, my multicolor for color B. Mm -hmm. And then the color C oh. is here under my finger. That's the rainforest. And then for D and E over here, okay. I decided to split the colors. So because our yarns are in 50 gram balls, I thought I'd use a purple, but I'm going to use two different shades. And here I thought the lighter shade would show up better. Mm -hmm. So I've got that in, so I've got orchid blush and plum. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the terracotta and camel. And I thought the terracotta would pop a little bit more there. Um, mm -hmm. And I do have aubergine sneaking up at the top there. I don't know if it'll happen. And I'm going to use the rainforest and sage For as my, my yeah. other one here and just kind of mix them in a little bit. So Lovely. yeah, I, I'm I'm happy with how it's worked out. I did think the beginning part was quite complicated, but I'm relieved to see that uh, I have pretty much got it right, and um, the wedges are working okay. Yeah, so it's it's going nicely. Ooh. Yeah, fabulous. Very yeah, very um, nice. I'm happy with um, I'm happy with how it's how it's turning out, and. <laughs> Uh, I I know that a lot of people were worried about colors and things and how's that going to work and and so we can kind of talk about that a little bit more. But my thing with his designs is that you can be really flexible with the color, you know, because his patterns are busy and there's a lot happening and you're going backwards and forwards between colors. As long as you repeat a color, it's or make a big statement with something, you can introduce a new one pretty much at any time. Okay. Yeah. And is Sue knitting? <coughs> Sue, I think, was having some challenges and had a few questions, right? Um, Have a sip of tea. <coughs> My, Maybe I it's gin. <laughs> Ooh, I hope it's gin. That would make uh, me happy. Just, <laughs> homemade ginger tea to try and help my, my bronchitis. Okay. Um, sorry to hear that. Oh, sorry, T. It was it was such a. I actually saw a doctor on Friday. I mean, it's such an issue to actually see a doctor. Yeah. No. But anyway, at least he was able to say it's just bronchitis. Good. Good. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I've done this, but I'm not. I'm I'm not sure about the colours whether my colours you know those are the colours behind. Yeah. I think those look lovely, Sue. But from the front, 
Yeah. So I think the the difficulty at the moment is that, Mm. like you, the lightest color is looks like it's dominating, and it's easy to get worried about. um, Oh, is is this going to is this going to work? Um, and and I think once you finish the next section with the straps that go all the way around after the wedges, that will bring a little bit of balance in because that's all of the solid colours. You've got Tambourine Man as the variegated, is that right? Well, I, I don't think I have. What's this? Um, it's a sort of greeny. Ah, you got one of the... Um, one of the uh, limited edition color combinations. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I don't know whether I've got enough kind of variation. Uh-huh. I mean, I started with the aubergine. Okay. Because I thought that was the just listening to him. And then uh-huh. I went to the one which I thought was the, the sort of contrast. Yeah. Perfect. Um, Perfect. But I don't know whether I need an, anything else. Well, you no, could... my question is, Go ahead. I've got two balls of each of these. Yeah. And then this one, which seems like much bigger, You've also... but I've got two of these. Is that right? So um, the our yardage is a little different from what oh, okay. he said in the pattern. So you've got more than enough yardage, and we made it up with the second skein of that one. Um, and you you can you can really sort of play around a little bit so if the natural that you've got in there is feeling too natural then switch in the multicolor switch in the variegated next time you're supposed to be doing natural so that that would be for the that's twiggly whatever yeah or stick with the natural you know do do one or two and see do you like the effect because all the colors are going to keep coming back um and so yeah you you kind of just have to see how it feels for you and then what you could also do is if you want a little bit of zing and you're feeling like they're a little too subtle I mean, I'm just looking at the pink on your shirt today. You could put a little pop of a bright pink in somewhere or an orange or a yellow or, a, you know, but also you don't have to. Would that be like your hot pink color? Yeah, or... yeah, something like that. My other question is I seem to have some little holes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a very holy thing. Um, <laughs> and I think it must be where you use knit that sort of funny V. Uh, the German short row. Pick yes. Up. Yeah. yeah. It's got to pull it quite tight. I don't yeah. know. You see, I, I don't know whether I'm supposed to unpick and fix that or. Ooh, let let's, let's have a look. Um, like there and the, there. I mean, is that a problem or is that? Have you have you actually dropped a stitch or is it just a little bit of, is the yarn a little bit loose? I don't know. I mean, I can't. I think the yarn is loose. Yeah. I think yeah. the yarn is loose. So, so and I, think I would just say, take, look from the wrong side and take a darning needle and pull the tension through to the wrong mm. side. Because the first... The first three wedges, I haven't got that. You pulled the stitch tighter, that's why. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. Or maybe you forgot to knit two together on the pickup. And I also think that once you have um, blocked it, once you've started wearing it, the weight of the of the rest of the shawl might sort of like settle the stitches a bit. And once you've dunked it in the water and you lay it out, it will it will come right. It won't be quite as obvious as what it is to you now. And you must remember, you know about it now. So that's what you're fixating on. So I would just, don't stress. Uh, don't yeah, stress. Yes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> mustn't <laughs> stress. Because if you do unpick, presumably you've got to unpick till you get to the 
say that row 34. Yeah. It's, I must say yeah. it's quite easy to unpick if you if, uh, frog. So if you go back to the, you've got the, when you get the long one again, mm. and then the first, the first row you put in the new color, then it's very easy to find all the stitches because the new color is now in the old color. It's like those, those, if that makes sense to you. So it's very easy. Then you can just pick up all the stitches and slowly get the old color out. That's how I did it. And then you just you start at the baseline again of the full full length before you start the new wedge, if that makes sense. So and then you've yeah. got your 35 stitches again. And, and then you can start with your new color again. So and that worked out quite nice. If if you do that, do you just restart with the same bit of colored wool? Well, you, you, yeah, yeah, you start, you start with whatever color you were starting with on that wedge or whatever color you want to do that wedge with. But that same piece. Let me just uh, show you. So but, um, Sue, let me show you on the table over here because I think it's easier. Oh, yeah, that's easier. Oops. Yeah. The table view over here. So I think what Rox is saying is, for example, say those two wedges are fine mm. and, and you want to come back to here. Yeah. Then keep these stitches on your needle yeah, and always yeah. unravel this section over here so frog this back here and come back to this color repeat and once you you've undone the first row of the color repeat it's easier either to pick up this first row of the color repeat or to use that to find as a guide to find the stitches on this last row of the previous wedge yeah the last row of the previous wedge, wedge is easier because then you get back to your 35 stitches without having done the, the knit together and or you start a new wedge again basically yeah and and it's easy to find the stitch because you're pulling out the the new color out of the the, the other color yeah yeah, because so you've got some. I found it. I found it. Out. I was a bit worried when I started frogging, and then it actually turned out to be really easy, because it was actually very clear where you can just pick up your stitches again. I hope that helps you. Would I? That's a funny, but but just because of the amount of the yard, the yardage or the meterage yeah. of the wool, would I say I pulled out the aubergine? Should I? carry on with the ball or use the bit that I've pulled out. Ah, uh, use the bit you pulled out. Yeah. And hope that it'll well, well it will, you know, it my wedge just one yeah, it'll, be fine. Fine. it'll be fine. So my my wedge was too big and that's why I frogged it. So I knew that the yarn that I because I already cut it off and then I, I made it all nice and then I'm like this doesn't work out. So I knew the bit that I've used was going to be long enough to make another wedge because okay. I've already made a wedge with it. So it, it feels like you don't have enough, but it will be enough because you've already made the wedge with it. So um, so you can just use the same yarn again, yeah. basically. And it's not like you're knitting a different number of stitches or anything. You're just going back because you want to try and fix that one hole. And Rox, did you unpick row by row? Well, it's sort of it <laughs> because you do that funny German ending, whatever it's called. It sort of falls apart on that side of your work. You sort of like, ah, what's happening? That's why I said like, okay, I'm just gonna go all the way back, and uh, and that's why. But when you get to that last, that sort of the end of the previous edge or the start, whatever that long one, it suddenly it just calms down, and there are all your stitches to be picked up one by one. So. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it just, it will unfold itself. Just, yeah, it's just in the beginning, you go like, oh my God, what's happening? But just, that's why I just go back to that first one. And then you pick up all your 35 stitches, easy peasy, and off you go again. So it's, it's um yeah, you just, you go, it, it, it just happened as it happened. <laughs> I must say, it was a bit funny. And yeah. Sue, the other thing that's a useful guide is, if you look over here at that um, that little starting section, you mm -hmm. knit those stitches in to each wedge. Yeah. So you'll be able to find the beginning and the end of a wedge because there'll be one of these stitches coming undone. So just make sure that you pick those up and frog slowly so that you can see what's happening. Okay.
I noticed on Instagram, he mentioned that um, in a comment in somebody else's post, that um, he said once the piece has been blocked um, and completed, the fan is going to be nice and spread out and you'll see the colors. Mm -hmm. So trust the process, <laughs> just go for it. <laughs> You probably won't even see the hole when you pull out, when you stretch it out. Mm. And if you just work the loose thread along a little bit with a needle, it'll probably be fun. Mm. Um, Sue, you had a question about uh, picking up the V off the um, awkward edge, I think. Yeah, I just... Yeah, I just wondered if there were any tips, but <clears throat> if, you, if you sort of squash the eye cord edge, you get a nice V, and presumably that's the V you use. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, it's the V on the, on the, on the wrong side that you want to catch, apparently. So. Well, the one thing that I try to do is make sure that I'm following mm. the same the V in the same position all the way yeah. around the eye cord. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so as you say, just squish the eye cord and then the stitches show themselves neatly and you can see where the last one was and so you can make sure that the next mm. one goes in the same okay. position. So maybe I should take a little um, something and, and see if I can fix this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just put a needle. Before okay. you start frogging, just use, uh, use a, a needle bit. before you start going mad. Yeah. I had also, um, I don't know if you want to highlight me, Bridge. Sure. Um, no, oh, yeah, there's my one. I still have one left. I have this, this little pit. I saw people ask questions about it as well. It's when you make the turn and you do that, the, the yarn over, you get the two things. I've, I've, I've had many, I had many more, but I just went to the back and I just pulled it through a bit. And then they go away. So if you have these little pits like here, these ones, yeah, then it's it's it will go away apparently when you uh, block it as well. And it's just basically because I didn't pull it tight enough on on this side. So that's so, what my problem is that's the thing I've got too, isn't it? Yeah. So don't worry about it. You can just if you pull it on the back. Let me see. It's, so if you look here at the back, uh, like yeah, here here it is. This one, you can see how it's a bit skew and it goes frontal. Now let me get a, a needle. Now and I go in. Um, here we go. So now I'm pulling it. I'm I'm just pulling it out a bit, and voila, it is gone. Yeah, magic trick. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's just it's just I didn't pull it tight enough to the other side. So you just need to wiggle on the on the on the wrong side. I should actually wiggle it a bit more. There we go. And now it should be gone. Yeah. So it's it's just that you didn't do the tension to the right way. So I before you start frogging, I would go get a needle and just fiddle it the wrong side a bit to to get everything, you know, to even it out. Because I, I noticed this well with the eye cord. This, they're not all the same size or something, it's a bit bigger and then you just, you know, you wiggle it a bit through and then it evens out. So, yeah. That's back you know there's been progress when the student becomes the teacher. <laughs> yes, I must say I'm quite, uh, quite pleased here. <laughs> I'm a natural teacher anyway, but like anything I learn new, I will immediately start teaching other people. <laughs> No, it's fantastic. It's lovely to see how confident you are with the knitting rocks compared to when you started. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's really last year. like last year's knit along is like it started the thing for me. And now it's, but Jane was so great because she really explained how it works and, and how to read um, like your, your stitches, yeah. which I've never done before. Like when you know you're on one side or this is a pill or that's a knitting and, and then how you can fix it and so it was really, it's a, yeah, an eye opener. And now when I, on my work, I understand more what I'm doing. So I did the first two wedges with the pattern and then you go like, oh, that's what I'm doing. And the fact that we did an eye cord last year as well, that helped a lot for us now because we've already done an eye cord. So you understand the principle of it. 
so I basically did two wedges with with pattern and, and the rest was just you just know what's happening so yeah now it's really really great so thank you for getting me into knitting Bridget you're welcome who is, who is whoever is watching this video I'm more a crochet person so <laughs> And I have been converted to a knitter. <laughs> and Jane has joined us. So, uh, so oh, hi, Jane. You, she was smiling when you said uh, that she learned you learned a lot from her classes. Yeah, no, very much so. I like you haven't heard like I like this this piece of fabric today had two dropped stitches somewhere along the line because I I, I you get back to it and like what happened here, and I go like okay, hang on. Get my crochet needle to work my way through and I picked them up and you cannot see it ever happened. So and that's all uh it's it, yeah it's 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 all so Jane. Yeah. Yeah. Well but certainly and the eye cord, you have no idea that your eye cord shawl would have been such an important tool for us now. <laughs> <laughs> we are just creating eye cords all the way. It's I think it's gonna not be a brio shawl but an eye cord shawl. Because he's, he's, he's really loving the eye cord. He's, he um, did say there was going to be brioche in the show. Um, yeah. It was a guess. Um, Rox, have you finished your um, step one? No, I'm, no I'm, I'm here. This is how far I got today. Okay. And so my next, um, the next part is the fees and the, and the rows and the, the funny eye cords at the end. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah so this is how far i got nearly there yeah nearly yeah <laughs> no, it's, it's like well this was really easy actually um it was and it, it goes very quickly with the wedges so, so yeah so who has done this i finished my clue one for the week okay now i'm now i'm knitting a beanie of my own design trying to get stripes with the oh, good. Cargill striping yarn. Okay. So good work. I've, show I've Jane what it looked like. Show Jane what it looked like when it was finished. Oh, your, okay. Your first... Okay. Yeah, he did say it was going to be quite big, didn't he? Yeah. I think it is going to be a big shawl. But I did question somebody's math maths because they worked out that so far in the Ravelry group seven kilometers of yarn and I'm like okay so that seven people have joined the Ravelry group because it's over a kilometer of yarn per person so they, they think they need to go and rework their maths. Yo. Um, How many steps are there? Uh, four, there's four, four clues. Four clues. Four of yeah. Okay. But this is so, basically four steps in one clue. Because this was number one, <laughs> it was the start, little little lacy work, and then you start doing the wedges, and then the next bit is the 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 the, the rounded things around with the V's, and then you still have to make all these sausage I cord things. Well, you, you can show better uh, who's got yeah, it. So it, it was four steps. Yeah, um, four steps in one clue. Mm -hmm. are going to be in each clue because obviously as it gets bigger i think there'll probably be less steps <laughs> or we're going to have to become faster knitters <laughs> well, apparently next week is a lot of knitting so so who else has, has done the um step one no. or clue one oh, so you, can show, you can show yours it looks beautiful i uh, i'm on i'm on I'm counting each part of, of the first clue as one week. So this is going to be a four week. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, I'm doing, yeah, just this. Okay. This. And your colors? Oh, there you are. On the other side, I see them. Yeah. That's going to be lovely. But I think I need another bright color. Hmm. I like the idea, or Bridget's idea of the hot pink. Yes. Oh, pink. I think it'll be just incredible. And if you don't want to go hot pink, then dusty rose would also work quite well if you don't want to go too bright. Yeah, would some, some one ball or two balls of those. I mean, as much as or as little as you want to put in, really. I 
think if you're adding exactly. it in as an extra, then one ball would be fine. Uh, you're <laughs> adding them in your stash, Sue. Or no, you, I have don't. To, you have to get DHL. To... <laughs> no, Sue, uh, though, the good news is you could just get on a plane and come and get it yourself. <laughs> okay. That's true. I'm coming in February, I think. Amazing. Oh, yay. Jane. Yeah. Jay wants to show the colors. So there's the hot pink, which will really create some beautiful zing. There's yeah. the, the dusty rose won't create the same zing that the hot pink does. Yeah. And, and I think, Jane, by your left baby fingers, the ruby grapefruit, which could also be a nice. Oh, egg. yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the, and there it is, this yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I heard for hot pink. And uh, so I don't know if everyone else has been looking on uh, Instagram at the um, at the the pictures there because I find that quite a nice way of getting an idea of how different colors are working and mm. seeing what I like and what I don't like. And mm. that was what I did. Um, I mean, I went straight to the end of the video before I even listened to the instructions and, <laughs> and looked at what it had looked like because I wanted to see how I was going to put colors together. And um, yeah. I wasn't very inspired by the colors that he had in his swatch. And it felt like they blurred together a little bit in that, that last section with the, um, the uh, slip stitch Vs. Um, but when I went and looked at some of the pictures online, uh, there were lots of beautiful looking swatches. And so it made me want to make the contrast a little bigger. But that's my personal preference. And, and everyone has their own taste in, in what they like and, and how they want their project to turn out. So Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I bought the black from you, the charcoal. Because the, the two, the, the mushroom and the beige is it's too similar. Yeah. And I'm already within the wages to go from the sage to the variegated to the mushroom. It, it's, it looks all very similar. Yeah. So I'm glad I had that pop of, of black in there. But, uh, but he said to, to use the darker color as a framing for color B. But I'm like, well, that's going to be very black at to on the top. So that's why I went for the plum. And uh, so I just I don't want to get a very dark um, shawl. Yeah. yeah. So and I think the blue in there might also give it a nice extra extra color palette. Yeah. yeah. And and I think it's, it's, it's I almost, the way I this is the picture, up. Yeah. The way this is yeah. lifted up is it gives you a, a real insight into you can have very different colors, but when they're similar intensity, they don't pop against each other. So if you yeah. put the camel in there where it's similar intensity, it's, um, it's not as striking as it would be if you put the terracotta, for example, mm -hmm. which is similar color, but much, uh, yeah. much uh, stronger value. So, yeah. yeah. So that's definitely something to think about. You know, when you're putting the, when you're putting the yarns together before you know how the pattern knits up, it's quite tra challenging because you don't mm -hmm. really have a sense of what's going to be sitting next to what and and how are these going to going to mix so yeah i think a good guideline is to take a photograph of all your colors and then make that photograph black and white yeah. because yes. then you will see what is the tonals that really tone and then what will pop and we have good contrast for you never mind the color of it per se it is the tonal part that that makes yeah. the difference really yeah the end of the day and i think also there's the the personal preference in terms of um you know how do you like a garment to to knit up do you want strong contrast between mm. the different colors mm. um are you happy with a more subtle contrast um yeah. yeah because there is no there is no right or wrong <laughs> And it also speaks to your confidence with colors. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had a customer the other day, she's like, she needed to knit a sweater and it was color work and it required three colors, but she wanted to go, she was too scared to go outside of the bracket as such. So she went with all grays and she loves it. And she sent me a photo and she's like, oh, look how beautiful this is. And I'm looking at it and I'm going, so boring why didn't you like go for like a red or a you know a, a anything other than three grays 
could have put in another color somewhere and it would have just made it even brighter and much nicer. But she told me from the beginning, she doesn't have confidence choosing colors. So it, and you can't always push somebody to, to choose colors that they don't feel comfortable with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a combination of both colors that you feel confident choosing, but also colors that you feel confident wearing. Yeah. No, no, very much so. We know you're confident with the pink, Sue, because you're wearing it today. <laughs> <laughs> so if I order some pink, hot pink, then at mm -hmm. some point will somebody help me decide where I add it? Of course. Of course. Of course we will. Yeah, definitely. I mean... You, you remember from uh, Jane's Sweet Dreams shawl, you know, we don't know how this one's going to end. Maybe all you need to do is do the very last little outside piece. You know, the edging, the finishing edge in hot pink, and that will give it a little bit of, of zing. Maybe you throw it in somewhere before you get to the end. Yeah. So his patterns are very forgiving in that, in that sense. <clears throat> So I was looking at the at his video as well. Those V's done in hot pink would yeah. really Yeah, I was also thinking that. Yeah, would look beautiful and then to use it again somewhere else as well. Yeah. Mm. So I'd have to wait a bit. I was gonna say the only thing is that might uh, might put a little spanner in the works. You can't run no, out no, of no. the little so stuff. She's doing each part of each clue as a week. So she's still got this week. So if she orders today, she can have it by the latest on Monday to start it next week. So we, we are, we're okay. I like the way you think, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> I'm aware until next Wednesday over the weekend, so. So there you go. The HL can travel over the weekend whilst you're also traveling and have your wool with you on Wednesday. <laughs> I, yeah. I thought I might, have, but I thought I might have. I'm going to have lots of knitting time in Sheffield whilst the girls are at school. Oh, so. <laughs> but what you can do with those V's to create a pop is use your aubergine for your V stitches, and then use the lighter colours as your background. Then you don't need the hot pink now. You've still created a bit of a contrast. Yeah. But so, but don't your you darkest need purple? How many colors do you need in that section? Four. Four in total. So you need three for the, the, the big bits and one for the, the Vs. I haven't knitted it. Are the, are the Vs not the same color as one of the big stripes? No. Oh, okay. So the Vs are, the V, the v color you, you basically carry up yeah. in your eye cord along, and that's only two rows. And then you've got four rows of With another color. Eight color. So if you did, so if you did a dark purple for that section, and then you maybe did your variegated, um, not that I wouldn't say the natural. No, okay. you leave the natural because that's your color B, and then your other two lighter colors. Then you've got that V stands out more. Like that. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. Do, what I would almost do is, um, I think there are three stripes. I would do the do the aubergine, then do the first stripe in the variegated, then the second stripe in the orchid blush, and then the third stripe in the variegated again. You could do that. That would actually work. The gray, I think you've got a, a gray or a silver fox or something. Yeah. Because the silver fox is similar value to the orchid blush and it won't stand out as much, whereas I think your multicolor would look quite nice. So just tell me that again. So you're going to start with the aubergine to do yeah. the V stitches. Yeah. And then there are three stripes or three bands of color. Yeah. And I would do the, um, the variegated. Mm-hmm and then the orchid blush, and then the variegated again. Okay. So not this, not the gray. Yeah, just don't use it now, and you can bring it back later, or you substitute it, the hot pink in when that arrives, 
or not. Okay. Thank you. That's helpful. Yeah, sure. Um, Jane, I've got a question because I'm... Um, uh, Roxy wants to use a double knit for her V-sections, which is slip stitches over basically five rows, six rows. Is that not going to be too thick? Is it not going to pull it a bit when you finally knit it again? Um, it shouldn't. Um, to do those Vs, do they get wrapped around the needle? No. To be able to take it across? No. It's so, just a plain uh, slip stitch. Just a plain slip stitch, which yeah. goes across rows. Six rows. Why isn't it pulling and creating a kind of gather? It does already. So I'm just thinking, is it not going to be too much going for a thicker yarn for your slip stitches versus the thinner yarn for the rest mm -hmm. with a small needle? I, I, I'm not questioning Roxy using um, no, that no, yarn. I'm, I'm questioning just, it I'm, myself. So I'm, I'm going to try it. This one thing is I'm just going to start it and then do the first row and do the first V. And if it's absolute shit show, sorry, for the recording, then I'll just I'll just put it all out because I'll just end up with this again. It's at the door, you know, and then I'll start. And over I, I, I'm, I'm curious from a, a, you know, no, but then I'll let you all know if it works or not. So, <laughs> Lauren, I don't think that you need to worry too much because our beehive baby blanket pattern yes. that's effectively done with the okay. background is um, the merino twist and the slip stitch is the DK. And all it does is makes a slightly stronger color statement because it's a thicker mm. thread. But on with those okay. two yarns, it, it doesn't... Um, it doesn't kind of weight it in, in a... So, uh, Go ahead, Jane. So question is, uh, how many rows does that slip stitch carry over? Six. Six, Six. rows? Yeah. It's quite a lot. Um, I would wrap it. I would wrap that stitch when you, when you first knit it. I would wrap it around the needle twice at least. So that when you come to slip it, you've got a looser stitch. A little bit because longer. Over the row, yeah. yeah. Over the row, because it's going to pull it in quite a lot. But yeah, because if the, the double thing becomes one over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Because I was just thinking I'll just knit it really loosely. And then uh, so it, it, yeah. it's, I've got more space to pull it up. Yeah. If and you just wrap it around the needle when you knit it, then you, you've got that extra yarn that you need. Mm -hmm. And I would wrap it for six rows you're not yeah. going to be able to because it's already a uh, it's a knit yarn over knit into that stitch so your yarn over becomes a stitch that you slip in the next row okay then do it as a double yarn, yarn. Mm. okay yeah I'll, I'll see when i get there but I'll, I'll make sure i have a little bit more to work with yeah, yeah. And, but it, when, um, if you do yarn over anyway I do it as a double yarn over or even yeah. with the yarn over wrap it around your needle two or three times and then knit the next yeah, stitch. Yeah, so you just didn't have enough because yeah there's quite a, yeah. a big gap to cover so you just want enough yeah. uh, that you don't have to pull in the rest of the stitches. To yeah. Get yeah. There, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. No, I, I know what you're talking about yeah so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll have a look when I get to that point yeah. Okay. So, and you must take I, photos Roxy so we can see what it looked like. So yeah. in case you don't like it and you pull it out, we've at least got no, a I won't pull it out before I so like, okay, guys, this is not working. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is working. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, no, I'll try, I'll try hopefully I'll my first try will be the right one. But if it doesn't, then I'll go back and I'll try another version and see if it because mm. it would be nice to be able to use the yarn because I think it's a nice added color to it. So mm. yeah. Otherwise, you just have to go shopping and buy Air Force and that. In the <gasps> I'll just have to go visit El Marie again and Cynthia. She'll just have to wind my wool again. And yeah, it's war. It's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> the pain of having to buy yarn. <laughs> yeah, just. 
Dane, would you rec um, recommend putting in <laughs> lifelines for people like myself? <clears throat> Absolutely. Absolutely. You, it may take a bit longer, but if you're making mistakes, it's much quicker. Because mm -hmm. then you've got somewhere to go back to. So when I do brioche, whenever I've changed, because um, for me, brioche is um, where I tend to make mistakes. So when I do brioche every um, 10 rows, I'll put in a lifeline, regardless of what my pattern is. And then I'll pull out the one before when I've done my 10 rows and it all looks good. I pull out the previous one and keep going and building on. It's quick and easy to knit 10 rows, but when you knit, a, when you get to the end, <sighs> I think for now it's just easy knitting and purling. So we're okay. It's not that bad. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but um, that's why it's very easy. No, that's why it's nice. We now just have this and you continue on this. So if, if something, if that V thing doesn't work out, you can just frog it till you get back to this and just start over. But once you find the first, I'm sure when once the first line of the first V is and you're happy, then you can just continue. And then it, I don't think it's that complicated, is it? Is it? If it's, it just seems to be knit and pull all the way. It just seems to be it's stocking. Just, yeah, it's st stocking and then the eye cords. But yeah. I, I agree with Jane. If you feel conf more confident in your knitting, putting in lifelines, and it's going to make you um, step out of your, you know, confidently jump to the next section, then put in your lifelines. I mean, it's it's not something that's going to, that you, you can't take out. So I would say put it in if it's going to make you feel easier with what you're doing. It's like, having a child some children jump into the swimming pool and they can swim a length without a problem other children need aids to swim for a lot longer it's just the person um and if you don't if you if that makes you feel safer use it yeah definitely thank you pleasure pleasure and you've got my number if you need any other questions answered <laughs> Yeah. Sure. Did you finish? Did you finish the jersey, Lauren? Yes, I did. Let me quickly get it. I'll show it for you. Okay, I'm going to hit stop on the recording.